Today, I'll give you a quick demo on how you can create bedding products in Clove. The first thing I'm going to show you how to make is a simple mattress shape. So I'm going to first go into my 2D toolbar, select this rectangle tool, just click once in your 2D pattern window. Today, I'll be making a half scale queen sized bed. So I'm going to put in 30 inches for the width and 40 inches for the height. Once that's done, I'm going to go into my 3D window, rotate this piece and just make sure check that the back of my fabric is facing the floor. Okay, once that's done, I'll just adjust this slightly so that it's closer to the ground. You can then go ahead, select this pattern piece and go edit in your property editor. So I'll add additional thickness rendering so that it looks like an actual thick mattress. If you find that the edges are a little bit too rounded out for your liking, you can then go up here in curbside geometry. You can turn the curvature percentage down a little bit. And just depending on how you like your mattress to be rounded out on the edges, you can adjust this number here according to your liking. Now I feel like my mattress looks pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead, click on file export and make sure I select OBJ. Once that's done, just save it in a folder that you will locate later. So I'll just type in mattress, click save. And once this menu shows up, just make sure that you have it saved as a single object and this thick option is checked. And you can just leave the rest as is. And once that's done, just hit OK. And you have now created your mattress OBJ file. Okay, once you've created your mattress, I've already linked my files to the library. So I have the quick access over here. I'm going to bring in my mattress, right click, select add to workspace. Make sure when you import your mattress, import it as an avatar. Once that's done, you just want to click OK and you'll have your nice mattress shape imported in the space. If you ever want to rescale your mattress, you can do that very easily at this step as well. Just click on the mattress OBJ and in specification in property editor, you can also edit and adjust the measurement if you wish to do it this way. Now I have my mattress all set up. The first thing I'm going to do is start creating a fitted sheet. So I'm going to go back to the rectangle tool, click once and again, create a 30 by 40 inch square rectangle piece. And again, just make sure check that you flip your fabric and the back of the fabric is facing the top of your mattress. Once that's done, just select this pattern piece and adjust it slightly so that it's laying nicely on top of your mattress. Okay. Once that's done, all we have to do just create the four additional panels on the side. I'm going to go into my edit pattern tool over here. Right click on the edge that I want to extend, select offset pattern outline, and I'm going to put in 6.75. And make sure check internal line. This create internal line is checked on. And I'll do this for all of the other edges as well so that it creates the extended panel from all four sides. Okay. Once that's done, you can then go ahead, turn on simulation and you'll just have this bed sheet nicely draped over your mattress. Next, let's go ahead and sew the four sides together. I'll use the segment sewing tool. Just click once, click two times, and just have your four sides all sewn together. Okay, once that's done, we can go ahead and apply elastic and have it nicely tucked in. So I'm back in my edit pattern tool. Just click and hold shift to select the four sides of your bed sheet. And I'm going to go into elastic over here in my property editor and apply elastic to those four segments. Once the elastic is turned on, simulate and 
you'll see now your bed sheet is being tucked nicely around your mattress. Once you have your mattress and fitted sheet all done, let's go ahead and make a quilt. So I will go back into the rectangle tool, click again in my 2D pattern window, and for the width, this time I will put in 45 and the height will be 48. Again, I'm working in half scale queen size bed. So this is also kind of the standard sizing for queen size quilts, but in half scale. Once that's done, again, I'll just rotate it so that it's laying flat parallel to the ground. And let's have it just on the side for now. So don't put it on the bed just yet. We're going to create the quilt line simulate before we apply it to the rest of our bedding. Okay, for today's purpose, I'll just create really simple quilt lines, but using any of these internal tools, you can just really play around and have any kind of quiltings done for you as well. So when you create internal lines, I'll just use the easiest way by creating it using the edit pattern tool. Right click and offset as internal line. And let's do six over here and just add additional offsets. And I'll just right click on this edge, offset as internal line. And I'll just make it in five for the distance. Once that's done, we can then go ahead and start creating the quilting. So now I am done with my quilt line designs. I'm going to go back to the transform pattern tool, right click on this pattern piece, and I'm going to select layer clone under. And this will automatically create a piece that is directly underneath the original. As you can see, it has it nicely stacked on top of each other. The great thing about this function is that when you created um, the internal lines first, it will also automatically sew together every single seam that is on the internal lines. So for people who love to create quilts or any kind of padded products, this is a super convenient function for you to use. Once that's done, I'm going to select both of these pieces and strengthen them. For the top layer, I'm going to go to my property editor over here and set it at a positive pressure. So I'll just do 10. And the bottom layer, I'll have it set at a negative pressure. When you have a piece of fabric that has the face facing out of the um, fabric, you will set that at a positive pressure. So for this bottom layer here, I have the back of the fabric facing outwards. So in that case, I have it set at negative pressure. So pressure is a great way for you to express any kind of product that has fill or quilting. Once that's done, we can go ahead, simulate, the reason why I like to apply strengthen before simulating is that it will apply a temporary star to your fabrics, makes it a little bit more stiff. And if you do that before simulating, it will allow the two layers of fabric to separate a little bit nicer. Once you do that initial simulation, you can then right click on strengthen so that it goes back into its natural fabric. Simulate again. And you'll see now the wrinkles and quilting looks a lot more natural. Okay, once that's done, I'm going to select both pattern pieces for my quilt and group it together. And now you have your quilt completed as well. Once you have your quilt successfully simulated, let's go ahead and create the pillow. So I'm going to again go back into my rectangle tool in my 2D pattern window. Just click once in your 2D space and then I'm going to put in my measurements. So it's going to be 14 inches wide and 10 inches the height. Now that I have the basic pattern piece for my pillow, I'll just rotate again to make sure that it's laying flat against the surface of the ground. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead, right click and select layer clone under. Once that's done, for this top layer, I'm going to set the pressure at five. The bottom layer, I'll do it at negative five. Once that's all done, just go ahead and strengthen the pieces. Turn on simulation. 
and you should see your pillow gradually simulate. Okay, once that's done, I'll just remove strengthen and let it simulate in its natural fabric. Now that I have the pillow insert created, I'll just group these pattern pieces, adjust it so that it's slightly above ground, and then I'm going to freeze these pattern pieces before I create my pillow case. Once that's done, go back into your 2D pattern window, right click, select copy, right click again, and I want you to paste that new copy on top of the original. Once you have the second copy created, just move it out of the way in your 2D. And the new copy won't retain the grouping, so you do not know that this is your new copy. And I'm going to just um, freeze these pattern pieces and then move this so that it's slightly above the original. And then just adjust this one so that it's slightly below. So whenever you readjust these pattern pieces, you want to make sure you kind of arrange it in the order that you will have it eventually end up in. So since this will be my pillowcase, I want to make sure that it lays nicely on the outside of this pillow insert. Once that's done, simulate again, and you should have your pillow nicely simulated on the outside of your pillow insert. Once that's done, I'm going to start and make some additional pattern edits. So I'm going to first select both of these pattern pieces and then use my edit sewing tool and then i'm going to delete the sewing okay once that's done i'm going to go back into my edit pattern tool right click on one of the edges on the right hand side and then i'm going to select offset pattern outline so that it will allow me to extend from that original edge so my extension is going to be two inches and just double check that create internal line is checked on once that's done click ok and then you can just right click on that internal marking that we checked on and then select cut and sew and then do the same for this bottom one and now you have that extended panel created and you see it automatically sews together that scene for you so all you have to do now is take your free sewing tool, sew back together these two edges, and then I'll use the segment sewing to sew together these remaining areas as well. Once that's done, I'm just going to use my gizmo to rearrange these pattern pieces. And if you're scared that it won't um, simulate properly, what you can do before you simulate again is Use my favorite tool, Strengthen, so that it applies a temporary start to your fabric so that it's a little bit more solid. Once that's done, turn on simulation, and you should have the pillowcase sewn together. And before you bring it back to its natural state, make sure you select both of these pattern pieces and set the pressure back to zero. Remove the strengthening and simulate again. And then if you want it to lay nicely, what you want to do is also unfreeze the pillow insert that you have on the inside and then just move it slightly closer to the ground. Simulate again. And it will just lay nicely and on top of your ground. Once that's done, if you want to add an additional pillow, you can directly create a duplicate of this one as well. If you paste it on top of your original, this will allow you to quickly locate that new set of pillows. So this is the second duplicate that I've made, and that will just allow me to create the duplicates really easily. Before you start moving things around again, I would suggest you group them together so you have everything that is belonging to the same set of pillows all grouped together. Now that you have all of your bedding products created, we can go ahead and bring in the bed frame. I'm going to right click and select add to workspace and just double check that you import it as an avatar since it will interact with the soft fabrics in your workspace. 
This pet frame I created in Clo as well, so feel free to experiment different kind of 3D modeling techniques in Clo if you have time. Once that's done, I'll select my pillows and just gradually position them so that it's closer to the front of my bed before I start simulating these pieces again. Okay, and I'll just gradually move this so that it's slightly towards the center. Once you have your pillows nicely adjusted, if you want them to drape a little bit more naturally on your bed, but you don't want them to lose the shape completely, a trick that you can do is click and hold and select your pin box tool and just place a group of pins on the top edge of your pillowcase. Once you have the pins placed, you should see it appear in your 3D like this. And what this does is it places a group of pins on the top edge of your pillow. So once you turn on simulation, it will just kind of hold it in place, which gives you a little bit more control since when you click on that pin group, you can then use your gizmo and very gently adjust it and push it towards the top of your bed. And now you have them laying nicely and standing nicely on top of your bed. Once that's done, I'll just turn off simulation and move it closer to that headboard. If you feel like the pins are kind of distracting you from the aesthetics of how you want to view your bed, in the display button on the top, you can under 3D garment, select show pins. And once you click on that, you'll be able to turn off the pins. Okay, now that's done. I'm going to select my comforter over here and then just again gradually move it so that it's laying on top of my bed. And then before you simulate it, you just want to make sure that it's nice and centered. Once you're all set up, since it's a bigger piece of textile, I'll just make sure to strengthen it again before I simulate. Okay, and once you hit simulate, it should just lay nicely over the bed like this. Once it does that initial simulation, set it back to its original fabric state so that it will drape a little bit nicer on your bed. Okay, now you have a completed bed setting created in clothes.